one matching function that's used uh, very commonly in the literature that people have used a lot is uh, the Cobb Douglas matching function. So let's see how it looks like and let's discuss briefly also why it has been so popular. So Cobb Douglas matching function for a given market. If we have a given market and um, you have you denote by M as usual the number of trades, S number of sellers, B number of buyers. The Cobb Douglas matching function takes the following form. M is going to be equal to some parameter omega, S to the power of eta, B to the power of 1 minus eta. So this is our Cobb Douglas matching function. which, um, as I mentioned, is very popular. So um, just like we did with the earn ball matching function, we checked that it had all the properties of the general matching function, you know, constant returns to scale, um, increasing in both arguments, and zero whenever one of the two arguments is zero. We can also check that all these properties are satisfied here. Um, um, so the easiest property, of course, is to check that if you have zero seller, or if you have zero buyers, you get no trades at all. And this you can see it if either S number of sellers or B number of buyers is zero, the number of matches is going to be zero. Second property that's key is that uh, your function is increasing in both arguments. And here you can see it, of course, immediately. If you have more sellers or more buyers, you'll get more matches. And here it, it just, uh, you know, for the earn ball matching function, we had to do a little bit of work to establish that. Um, here it's uh, immediate, of course, with the Cobb Douglas function. Third, we need to prove, uh, check that the matching function has constant returns to scale. And of course, we know that Cobb Douglas functions um, always have constant returns to scale. So that's not really an issue, but we can still, uh, we can still check it. So if you multiply all the inputs, number of uh, sellers and buyers by lambda, you get omega lambda s eta lambda b 1 minus eta. And of course, if you take um, eta out, if you take the lambda out, you get omega lambda eta lambda 1 minus eta s eta b 1 minus eta. And of course, um, here, lambda eta, lambda 1 minus eta, that's just lambda. Um, so you get lambda times omega s eta b1 minus eta. And therefore, you just get lambda times the matching function of s and b. Um, So uh, we can check constant returns to scale like this um, in the typical way for Cobb Douglas functions. Um, so um, also in terms of um, just language, um, you can see that the matching function has, depends on two parameters. So that was a limitation of the earn ball matching uh, function that it didn't have any parameters. So you couldn't parameterize it. Uh, you couldn't calibrate it to describe the real world, you can adjust it to describe real world data. Whereas here, you can see that the uh, Cobb Douglas function has two parameters. Cobb Douglas uh, function can be calibrated you know, to match real world data on uh, whatever market you're interested in. And, and when you want to do that, so that's one, that's one advantage of it. When you want to do that, there are two parameters to calibrate. So we have omega, and that's usually called the matching efficacy. 
So omega is just the scalars in front of the matching function. Uh, it's a matching efficacy, so this is going to describe how well uh, the matching works on uh, the specific market. So if you have a high omega, there tend to be a lot of matches that are generated. If you have a low omega, a few matches. And then you have eta, and that's usually called the matching elasticity. So omega, uh, eta, sorry, is the exponent on the number of sellers in the matching function. That's what we usually refer to as a matching, uh, matching elasticity. So if we were thinking about the labor market, uh, in the case of the labor market, the matching uh, function would be omega times uh, number of unemployed to the power of eta times number of vacancies to the power of one minus eta, and eta would be the exponent on the number of unemployed workers. Uh, so that's the matching elasticity, the exponent on number of um, sellers. And so if you want to describe the real world, um, a real world matching market, then you've got to calibrate omega, and you've got to calibrate um, eta. Mm -hmm. And so there are two reasons why the Cobb Douglas uh, function is so convenient. Uh, so one is that it's going to, you know, when you do uh, theory, it gives you trading probabilities that are very easy to handle. And so this, we can see it. Uh, we can see it immediately. Uh, so first reason why Cobb Douglas is so popular is that one, trading probabilities are simple, easy to handle. And so, uh, well, that's easy to compute here. So f of theta, remember that's the selling uh, probabilities. Uh, so it's just going to be m over s. And here you can see if you use the uh, expression for the Cobb Douglas function, it's going to be omega s theta minus 1 times b. 1 minus eta, that's omega, and then you get b over s 1 minus eta, and therefore you get that f of theta, it's just equal to omega times, and b over s, of course, it's the number of buyers divided by the number of sellers, that's just the market tightness. So it's omega times theta 1 minus eta. So it's super simple. Uh, the uh, selling probability is just an isoelastic uh, function of the market tightness. Um, and uh, the exponent is just 1 minus eta, where eta is a matching probability. The same is true, of course, for uh, the buying probability. So you remember, it's just the number of matches divided by the number of buyers. And that's just going to be omega s eta b minus eta. So q of theta is just going to be uh, omega times s over b power, uh, to the power of eta. And so q of theta is just going to be omega times theta, where theta is, remember, I should maybe have not it, theta is a market tightness, is B over S, number of buyers divided by number of sellers. And so the buying probability is just omega times tightness to the power of minus eta. So you have, again, um, a power function for the uh, buying probability, selling probability. So Cobb Douglas is as simple as it gets. Uh, it's very convenient theoretically. There is another reason why uh, we use Cobb Douglas so much. Oops. And the second reason is that actually Cobb Douglas has been shown to be a very realistic matching function when you look at the labor market.
there is much less work on thinking about other non-labor markets as matching markets. Most of the work on matching market has been devoted to the labor market. Um, and on the labor market, it has been shown that uh, the cop Douglas um, it's a realistic matching function. And so as a result, um, all the papers that study the labor market using the matching model, the matching framework, many of them are going to assume cop Douglas. So in fact, if you look at uh, um, the uh, famous survey on the matching function, function by Petrongolo and Pissarides, 2001, uh, what they conclude at the end is that, and here I quote them, the early aggregate studies converged on a cop douglas matching function with a flow of hires on the left-hand side. So number of matches is flow of hires and the stock of unemployed and job vacancies on the right-hand side, satisfying constant returns to scale, of course, if it's cop douglas and with the coefficients on unemployment in the range 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. So what Petron Golan and Pissarides are saying when they summarize the literature is that the cop douglas matching function is accurate for the labor market. We can't reject constant returns to scale for the matching function. And eta, um, the matching elasticity, which is the exponent on the number of unemployed, uh, is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. Okay? And uh, in the literature, you'll see that it's common um, to calibrate eta is equal to 0 0.5 and partly because it gives some symmetry to the model and keeps things very simple um, but empirically it looks like eta uh, it's between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 so Cobb Douglas is um, quite an accurate description of the matching process on the labor market it's very simple so it's something that we use um, very often. Uh, 